return to Japan once again. And a couple of photos we're going to show you, kind of show you the impact of Japan's ongoing power crisis at that nuclear plant. Take a look at Tokyo at night. This was before the quake and tsunami struck on March 11th. Tokyo Electric Power Company began rolling power outages, though, on Monday. Now take a look at this other picture. Tokyo after dark, after the rolling outage. Not quite as bright as you can see. The side-by-side -side comparison really uh, drives it home. Our Carl Van Wake is a CNN Eye reporter. He is in Tokyo for us, joins us now uh, on the line. Carl, we appreciate you being here. Uh, is this just becoming part? I, I know some people there in Tokyo, um, you, were, you were shaken up a bit, uh, but still don't have it as bad as a lot of people who are certainly losing their lives, have lost their homes in other regions. Are people just dealing, quite frankly, with these outages right now? Yeah, abs absolutely. Yeah, we're all very lucky to be not up north. And uh, and the power outage is just part of everyday life here now. The trains don't run so often. Uh, buildings are shutting down early, say, just, just before dusk, so people can get home before it gets dark. It's, it's just normal here now. Carl, we got a report from our, uh, our reporter there a short time ago of another earthquake that struck. Did you feel this one? It was about a 6.0 magnitude, but did you feel this latest one? Yeah, yeah. It was about 20 minutes ago, and uh, and these these are coming every day, every day now. This this one is probably the most strongest in the last few days, and uh, but but we're getting used to it now. Um, Japan, no stranger to um, earthquakes. Uh, first, how long have you actually been uh, in Tokyo? And also, when you feel the shaking now, is there a different? Uh, is there a different sense of angst, if you will, among, well, with you and maybe some of the citizens, given what we just saw happen about a week ago? Yeah, I've, I've been here nearly eight years, and I guess the difference between today and, and on the 11th is the 11th started off normal and just got bigger and bigger and bigger, side by side, shaking side to side, and then it started to go up and down. So that's the difference, the, the, the building actually shaking up and down, which is very unusual. Carl, after all this now, do you ever cross your mind that maybe um, all that shaking is too much for you and you, you might want to leave Japan at some point? Well, actually, I'm originally from New Zealand, and it's no safer there also, <laughs> as you know. They had the, they had the quake a few, you know, a few months back. That's a very good point you, you make uh, from New Zealand to, uh, to Japan, uh, shaking happening in both places. Let me just have your yeah. reaction, and, and I want to make sure I have this in perspective for our viewers. We hear about there's some contamination found, some radiation uh, found in some supplies of spinach and milk in that northern region near where the, uh, the nuclear plant and the crisis is happening there. Again, the levels you would have to take in so much of this food and milk. Uh, before you would actually be affected. So for perspective, our viewers need to know that. But still, for somebody living there, how did you react to hearing that news? Well, I guess when you go and buy milk, it's very, very hard to come by in Tokyo. The, I got some, uh, a couple of days ago, I had to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning because I knew that's when the delivery would be. And there was only two left on the shelf, even at that time of the day. So I took one and left one for someone else. But, but on the pack, it says where the milk's from. So I guess we just steer away from if there's any that escape down to the, into the market, just make, make sure it's from the south rather than from the north. 